Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite sized pieces. Today, got some interesting stories about what's going on in the market. So, first up, the Bitcoin's largest update in four years is about to happen. And even on my thumbnail, I said it's a clickbait thumbnail and a clickbait title because at first glance, this sounds awesome. When we truly take a look at what's going on, it may not be uh, that big of a deal, but it is important. On top of that, we'll take a look at uh, Secretary of Treasury uh, Janet Yellen backtracks her comments where she said that uh, there was definitely going to need to be an increase in interest rates, which calmed the whole market down. And finally, we'll take a look at uh, the New York Giants uh, for football NFL, Inc. a sponsorship deal with Grayscale in an NFL first. And this is fascinating because this is going to lead to more NFL players discovering cryptocurrency, realizing what it is, and then telling everybody about it, especially other fans. And that is what leads to mass adoption. So we'll take a look at those two factors or those three stories. Uh, but first, take a look at what's going on the market. So today, green day. Everybody's happy. Everybody's great. Uh, the market cap is almost $2.4 trillion. Let's take a look at the coin of what's going on. I can tell you a big uh, Dogecoin's up for sure. And so it is. 61 cents, 104% for seven days, 24 hours, 15%. And I even put on Twitter uh, yesterday, I just said, hey, I give up. Uh, Dogecoin is going to a buck and that's just how it is because everybody wants it to go to a dollar. And it makes me realize that it doesn't matter how much technical analysis you know, how much fundamental analysis you know, it just really doesn't matter for a short-term type of thing. Now, could Dogecoin become the world's reserve currency? Heck, who knows? I don't know. I never thought it was going to go to a dollar, and here we are. But uh, it is interesting that the power of, you know, uh, an, an Elon Musk, a Mark Cuban, and the community can really push it up uh, to this way. Let's see what happens in the long run. But if you're holding Doge, tip of the hat to you. Good job. So Bitcoin is up 57,000, 3,300 for Ethereum, Binance coin. Everything's up. Everything's great. And that's what's going on. Uh, sentiment analysis for trade the chain. Let me, let me blow this up so you can see it. I don't think there's really anything going on. So we're, we're just skyrocketing everything. So with 90% assurance, if I was a trader, which I'm not, simple token. I mean, I do trade. I'm just not a trader. Ave, Ontology, OKBR, we've been AeroSwap. So take a look at those because it looks like they could uh, go up. And then I want to just make mention real quick about a video we did about a, just a week ago. And it was called, it's called Trinity Trading. And uh, some people love it, some people don't like it because in this channel, mostly what I do is the basics. I just talk about the news and that's it. But every two weeks, we do Trinity Trading where I get uh, CJ there. He's from Market Rebellion. He does the technicals. Alex uh, down there, he does the sentiment analysis. He's uh, part owner of Trade the Chain. And I just, I'm along for the ride, fundamental analysis. And what we took a look at was waves. And we, from the technicals and the, and the, fun, and the sentiment and the fundamentals, we thought it was going to pop off in like six to 12 hours and just, you know, skyrocket. Well, it already skyrocketed before and we just missed it. Uh, it actually only went up about 7%. And all our trades, if you go in the, in the comment section, you can see all the different Trinity trading we've done, all the trades. And so far we've been in the positives, but people just were like, you know, 7% is weak and what are you doing? And it's just awful. And you can look through all the comments. I'm not going to go through that. It's a, uh, it's sometimes they're just very vile, but that's just how it is. But you know, who cares? Uh, but really, uh, if you, what happened in the next 24 to 48 hours is that it went from 1988, $19.88 to 23.25, which is a pretty good gain. And then today, uh, it hit a high of $42. So if you would have taken a look at waves and just kind of held on to it for just six more days, it would have went from under 20 bucks to over 40 bucks. And uh, we don't always get it right, but uh, it just made me realize something, which is, you know, when we make these calls, I'm just going to make a longer time frame because the, the technicals are there. The sentiment is right from Trade the Chain. And it just was, it was a massive gain. And then some people will say, well, why don't you pick Doge? Listen, I can't pick them all. We can't pick them all. I mean, hey, that's a, that's a, you know, a 2X in six days. So what is it what it is? Anyhow, that's what's going on there. Let's uh, take a look at our big story of the day which is uh, Bitcoin miners start signaling for Taproot. And it's uh, one of the biggest upgrades in four years. So when I saw this, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be fantastic. I can't wait. And I read it, I'm like, eh, all right. I mean, for some Bitcoin uh, enthusiasts, this could be fantastic news and just great. But when I think about it, I'm like, doesn't, don't other tokens do this? So, I mean, correct me when I'm wrong, Maxis, and uh, just go into what's going on. So Taproot, uh, this is what the upgrade has uh, been named, can help Bitcoin scale, which is good, you know, hey, great. And Bitcoin transactions can become more private. 
So that's great. But again, don't we have privacy coins for that? I mean, if you want to make Bitcoin do it, sure. If you want to, you know, uh, uh, make it scalable, great. But I don't think it's, I personally don't think that Bitcoin is going to go back and just be straight up currencies all and people are going to like buy these, uh, you know, little things. I mean, maybe it could. I mean, I just don't see it going to happen right now. So I guess it's great in the long run. But in all honesty, I'm like, don't we have other coins for that? Anyhow, Taproot is a soft fork that improves the blockchain script for privacy-centric and complex transactions. In order to upgrade the network, participants must come to consensus. So, of course, this is all decentralized. So in a centralized world, we just get together and go, you want to do this? You want to do this? Yes, let's vote. And majority has it. But in a decentralized world, it doesn't work like that. So more than a dozen blocks have been mined with blocks signaling the activation of Taproot. Okay, there's three distinct pools. Uh, F2 Pool, Foundry, and Slush Pool have all started signaling that's what they want to do. F2 Pool is currently the largest mining pool by hash rate on the BTC network. So when the largest pool says, yeah, we're going to go for that, and then all the other pools are like, sure. And after a while, you hit consensus, and now we're going to have an upgrade, and it's going to you know, help with you know, upgrading the, the, the transactions and also going to lead to more privacy. I'd like to see how that works out. So I guess it could be a little bit bigger, but... And in, in my world, it's like, you know, I think, I think everything has its role. And uh, if Bitcoin wants to do this, great. But again, I think it's a store of value, especially as time goes on. Let me know where I'm wrong in the comments section. I'm sure you will. Let's move on to our next piece. And again, that's why I put a clickbait title because it's kind of clickbaity. All right. So this is interesting. Uh, Janet Yellen, if you don't know her, she is the Treasury Secretary, and she came out uh, yesterday, and she said that um, she said we need to raise rates, which is in direct opposition to what the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said, which is we're going to keep the rates the same. And everyone's like, cool. There's we're, we're not going to increase the rates. Uh, we're going to have them at uh, very low, so we're going to you know not have as much uh, inflation. Everything's good. Janet Yellen's like, no, we need to do it. I don't know what this guy's talking about. But then she backtracks and she says, this is what she says. She goes, it's not something I'm predicting or recommending, Yellen clarified. If anyone appreciates the independence of the Federal Reserve, I think that person is me. And that's the whole story. The rest of it was just boring. So the whole thing about this to me personally is I look at this and I'm like, how fragile are the markets where you got, you know, the, the Treasury Secretary going, you know what? Maybe we should raise some rates. And then it just like crashes. This is the thing. I don't think people are that stupid where they're like, you know what, this is going to totally crash everything. We need to get out and everything. I think it, it, it makes some people a little bit jumpy and they start to sell. And then the whales look at it and go, hmm, this might be a big thing. And then they start selling like crazy. And then it goes from 56,000, 57 down to, I think it went to 52,000 yesterday. Check me where I'm wrong. And they're like, thanks suckers. And they just buy back because they're like, oh, that was a great story. And we just piggybacked off that one. Now, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, this is why I think that uh, bull runs and bear runs will never go out of style because people are greedy and people like to manipulate and uh, that's just how it is. And I think that this will play out again. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section and let's move on to our last piece. Uh, but before we do, just so you know, uh, and links in the description, if you like crypto art to actually put on your wall, uh, there's a link to get 15% off and there's all this cool stuff. So just so you know, <laughs> I love that one. Dogecoin and Bitcoin, everything else. So uh, it's all in acrylic. Check it out. That's all I got. And lastly, uh, New York Giants link or Inc. a sponsorship deal with Grayscale and NFL First. I thought this was interesting because I used to do a lot of marketing, uh, well, especially for my businesses and other businesses. And uh, I know that to get people to get it in their head that they, that they really should have cryptocurrency digital assets, you got to tell them like seven to 10 times and tell me if I'm wrong here. But if you've been talking to your family, friends and loved ones, and you've been telling them about crypto, how many times do you have to tell them before they're like, oh yeah, maybe we should do that. I'm telling you right now, I think it's some people need like 20, 30 times because they're just hard headed. And some people just need a couple times. But I think this is great because it disseminates the information. It gets into these high powered players, which a lot of people, because of social media is falling anyhow. Then when they see these guys and they're talking about how they got into Bitcoin or they got into Dogecoin or they got into Cardano or they got into Ethereum, whatever it is, whatever your great coin is, they're probably going to get into it. And now you've got spokesmen 
deep into all the social media platforms. And this is just the first one. And when people start to see that, especially like, like Okung, uh, he got his half of his salary. I think it was like around eight, nine million when Bitcoin was around $9,000. And then it went up to 55,000. So you're going to see more stories like that. People are going to be like, what is this stuff? I need to have this. This is why it's a, it's a big story for me. Anyhow, this is the thing. The New York Giants uh, has locked down the National Football League's first corporate crypto partnership with Grayscale Investments. Grayscale is now the official digital currency asset management partner of the New York Giants, a team said Wednesday. So guess what they're going to push? <laughs> all their different types of funds. So if you want to see what to invest in next, hop on over to Grayscale and take a look at what their trusts are. Cause I know they just added Mana. They just, add, they have Cardano. I think they still have the XRP. They have Ethereum, they have Bitcoin, a bunch of different ones. They're going to push that hard because that's what they have. And then that's what people will, that's what these players will get. And that's what they will push out to all their people on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all their different social media platforms. So that's just financial opinion. I'm just telling you. Uh, anyhow, what they're going to do is they're going to provide educational seminars on cryptocurrencies for giants personnel each year. It's the same thing in, in the medical industry. When you have uh, third year doctors, or you know, it doesn't really matter, they're, they're in med school. They have drug companies come in and drug companies give them educational seminars on all the medications that they're, they're, uh, they have. And guess what gets prescribed a lot? A ton of those medications. It's the same thing that's going on here. Uh, very smart play. Well done, tip of the hat. And then uh, last two pieces is, uh, I didn't really realize this, but uh, other crypto uh, ventures have gotten into the sports arena. FTX landed the naming rights to the Mi Miami Heat's basketball arena for $135 million. And Crypto.com also signed a sponsorship deal with hockey's Montreal Canadiens in March. So again, uh, I just thought it was a great story as far as mass adoption. So that is it for today. So look, um, I need to make these a uh, little bit shorter videos just to compress things. A lot of things are going on, trying to go out and uh, I have to build an obstacle course for this uh, charity event we're running at our sports complex for uh, under uh, underserved kids here in El Paso. So uh, these will be shorter as time goes on and maybe 10 minutes and I just got to do them and get out of here. So anyhow, if you like that video, uh, give it a thumbs up, like, that really helps a ton. Also consider subscribing. Uh, a lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive and uh, that is it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.